This is AP Biology, Chapter 26. We are going to be looking at the endocrine system or chemical regulation or control of homeostasis. It's one of the body systems. When we focus on part one of the video, what we're going to be looking at is how does the body chemically regulate all of its functions. Well, it turns out that our body coordinates all of its body systems and functions by using chemical signals, and those chemical signals are the things that we know as hormones. And so what hormones are used for is they, hormones convey a message from one part of the body to another. And the hormones come from endocrine glands, which are the, the organs and glands that make up the endocrine system. They're secreted into the circulatory system where they travel around the body until they reach the target cells. And then there, the target cells will undergo transcription translation usually, and then we'll get some sort of response at that cell. Now, what happens is that there is different types of communication or coordination that happens using these chemical signals. There's local and then there's long distance. If you're gonna use local signals, what we're doing is we're simply allowing one cell to have release a signal and have it diffuse through the fluid that's between the two cells until it can target a nearby neighboring cell. Whereas there's also chemical signals that are released out into the environment, and those are things like pheromones. Um, and pheromones are used to attract a mate in certain species of animals. Now, the endocrine system works very closely with the nervous system. And often what happens is the nervous system uh, detects a signal or a change that it wants. It communicates with the endocrine system. The endocrine system then secretes a hormone, which then goes and targets a target cell, and then we get some sort of response or effect. The thing about the nervous system and the endocrine system is that there are cells that work with both. So if you're in the nervous system, we're often talking about neurons. If you're in the endocrine system, we'll be talking about secretory cells. A neurosecretory cell is a type of cell that is involved and does jobs for both of the body systems. And again, the signal that the ner nervous system or neurons are using are those neurotransmitters. There are chemical neurotransmitters that are going to allow one nerve cell to communicate to another until we eventually get to the effector cell, which then gives us some sort of response with the body system. So here is a diagram of the neurosecretary cells. So here's an endocrine cell. You can see very clearly that what it's doing is it's producing these vesicles, and what these vesicles are going to fuse, we're going to release all of these particles using exocytosis. Once the particles diffuse out, they're going to diffuse into the capillaries, which is part of our blood vessel system, where they're going to travel to where they're needed until they re reach a target cell. And then again, they will diffuse out of the capillary into the cytoplasm of the target cell and so cause some sort of response. The same thing happens when you have your neurosecretary cells. Again, it's a kind of a nervous system cell. It's using exocytosis to release those hormone signals. They travel through the circulatory system to a target cell. Uh, the nerve cells are using the neurotransmitters versus the chemical hormone. So hormones are going to actually target cells by two different mechanisms. So <clears throat> the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to have hormones. And there's different types of hormones, different classes of hormones, and each one of those has a different kind of path or uh, process of how it affects a target cell. So there's protein hormones, there's amine hormones, and then there's steroid hormones. And the ultimate kind of process that hormones work by is a process where we've already covered in first semester, which is reception, signal transduction, and then response. So that cell communication that we previously covered is coming back around in this chapter. So let's look at hormones that are water soluble. So hormones that can dissolve in water. What they're going to do is they're going to bind to the receptor protein on a target cell's membrane. That then will have the signal be kind of conveyed across the membrane, and that's going to activate a series of proteins that are inside of the cell, not the actual signal, but just a series of proteins inside the cell. Once those proteins have become activated, 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 what happens is that we ultimately activate what's called the relay molecule, which then goes and targets the DNA. Oftentimes, we're doing transcription and translation as a result. So this process should look familiar when we look at it in diagram format. Here is our water-soluble hormone. It's binding to the receptor. We have signal transduction happening, so reception. Signal transduction, so now we're activating all of these different kind of relay molecules 
often that's using the phosphorylation cascade. And then we're getting some sort of response. So in this case, we're taking glycogen, our storage molecule, we're breaking it down into individual glucose molecules that we can then use to provide energy from cell respiration. So that's the response. A different type of hormone is the steroid hormones. Remember, steroids are lipids, so they don't dissolve in water. So what's going to happen here is a steroid hormone actually just goes straight through the lipid bilayer. When it gets there, it binds to a receptor protein inside the cytoplasm or in some cases inside the nucleus. That signal transduction happens. Then what happens is we're going to be doing transcription translation, and then we're going to be getting our response. So here is this cell communication diagram that, should, again, should look familiar. Here's our lipid-soluble hormone, so it goes through the lipid bilayer. So we have our um, reception. Once we have reception, then we have our signal transduction. In this case, we're having a protein bind to our DNA that then triggers transcription and translation. We then express or have our response, which is the production of a new protein. That's the end for the first video.